Welcome to this week's video and have I got a juicy adventure for you. I have adorable French towns, French markets, I even got a little bit of fabric. I have lavender fields at their peak, almond fields. I even got to visit a factory. I have cats in this video. I have visited a cat cafe, a cat library. And did I mention cute adorable French towns? Let's get into this adventure. Um, I'm having a little bit of a pinch me moment. I'm having major imposter syndrome. I am on a press trip with L'Occitane and I'm going to be visiting all of the farms, so the lavender fields, verbena fields, to see where they grow all of the products, almond fields, markets, really fun itinerary. I have just checked into the hotel and it's just so Parisian and cute. My hotel room is more like a little house. It is adorable and very Provence. As usual, I mean, I gotta do the room tour. <laughs> so we have the double doors and there is a lovely garden thing out there which I'll show you um, but cute little Parisian doors got that little patina on it beautiful bed Vivi got us a cute um, sun hat which is definitely going to be needed because it's very sunny here and look there's like a little bit of lavender on it we've got my tea station I don't think I'm allowed take this um straw bag i think it belongs to the hotel that's the name of the hotel um and it has this swimming towel in it and then that says don't steal the swimming towel <laughs> i have my tea station telly although i probably won't spend a lot of time here because we're going to be rambling around places um we've got the lovely i think these are faux beams um but they give a really nice effect and then we go into the bathroom. I am like, girl, <laughs> you've just got a toilet in here. We have a beautiful sink. Also, I noticed this as well. Look how cute this little window is. It's um, just got like a little latch here. And then I have a window. Oh, look at that. And we have another faux beam in the bathroom. And we have a nice bath and shower yeah we have a shower here oh my god we flew out this morning myself karen and vivian vivi who looks after l'occitan so we flew into marseille i had been to provence five years ago and we flew into i think nice and we had loads of driving so i remember at the time we were saying like flying into marseille is kind of the best one so if you do want to kind of visit provence with the lavender fields and everything from what i remember the last time definitely have a car to get around and fly into marseille if you can and we flew the ryanair flight which was great because i think it left at 10 so it wasn't too early and um it's like i think half two now i think and we're about to settle in we're gonna go get lunch and i will show you the lovely parisian gardens but honestly i i am having a bit of a moment as someone who like my regular viewers will know i love and i'll you know travel vlog and stuff but i never really do like press trips with companies um but i've never really been on a press trip like this before i think this is one of my first and i've always watched you know big youtubers and everything go on these press trips and being like oh i would love that so i'm kind of having a like oh my god i am actually on one moment um i think what i'm trying to say is a big gratitude that's what i'm trying to say um i might split this video into two but for my viewers who love the Sunday Garden video, I think you'll like this one. I'm going to try and ask as many questions as I can about the growing of the lavender and lavendine, the almonds. I've been reading up about some of the uh, growers. We're actually going to meet the actual owners of the farms who grow for L'Occitan. And they're going to let us walk around and they're going to like interview with us so we can ask them questions and get to actually see their farms and then i think we're going to the laboratory as well so i'm gonna wash my hands wash my face <laughs> and get some lunch
Joe's caught. If I zoom in, what are these little green things on this tree? I know this trap is an olive, but can you see them? I wonder what these are. They're not olives, are they? Or not olives, sorry. Almonds? I don't think they're almonds, but I'm gonna have to find out what they are. Are they peaches? No. I'm also probably going to get chewed alive. Can you hear, is it crickets? That do be in the field. The sunset is just gone down and I'm meeting the people. I'm meeting the girls for dinner now, but I'm just having a little wonder. Like how pretty is that house over there? And I don't know what's growing in the garden, but I'm just exploring the area. Although I'm probably going to get eaten alive. That moon is a whopper. Look. It just looks miserable on camera. But hold on, let me show you these little cottages. Good morning. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, that was a great way to start the morning. <laughs> I just wanted to say we are going to the market and also apologies I'm trying to use this mic because the sound does be awful on my vlog camera and I don't know if this is any better I will one day get the sound the sound does be grand when I'm at home I'm with my cannon but anyway we are on the road so we've got the mic um, this morning I'm going to meet the girls for breakfast now it's nice and early we're going to the market in for for calcier for calcier for calcier the market is on, I believe, every Monday, but there could be different markets on um, towards the end of the week, like farmers markets and fruit markets, but this market is a market for kind of everything. On my wish list is a straw backpack basket. I think I've seen these things on Pinterest. <laughs> I don't know if they exist, but I want a really nice straw basket that is a bit bigger, just for when we... Um, First of all, from my own shopping at home, because it'd be cute. I do have little baskets, but I want a bigger one. And because we're going to be going to the lavender fields and all the farm fields, and I'll have some equipment with me, I'll have my tripod and stuff. It'd be nice to just put into me pretty basket. And it will also look cute in pictures. So my mission is to find a French husband down the market so I can stay here longer. <laughs> and a straw backpack basket. So I'll keep you posted on both of my um, shopping items. <laughs> I forgot how handsome the French men are. Ooh la la. Um, yeah, so breakfast. Actually, I need to go to Karen. I need to, I need to go to Karen. My toothpaste ran out. I had a travel toothpaste and I need to boom toothpaste off her and I think sun cream. I have facial sun cream on like I have actually I love this one this is because sun cream gets into my eyes this is skin ingredient skin shield this one it's it is spendy but it lasts I think I paid 40 quid for it that is expensive for, I think it is but it kind of lasts me I get like th about three months out of it um, I find this really good and it has a pink hint so it doesn't make your face really white but um, yeah I need to get something for my skin 
Oh, I might actually get a straw hat. Anyway, we're waffling. We are waffling. Let us go. Let us go. Welcome to the Monday market down at Falkelkier. And this is a beautiful market. I do believe that they have a Thursday one, but it's more of a farmer's market and it's like food and produce. So the market today, there was... So what I noticed a lot of, there was a couple of fabric stands, which you'll see I got some bits at. There was also some food stands as well, but just not as much. Loads of textiles, jewellery, bric-a-brac. There is like a little bricante shop as well around here that you can pop inside as well. So it was just a treasure trove of bits. There was a couple of clothing stands as well. And you know what? It was really good value because obviously I was just comparing the prices to, you know, back home. But I was able to pick up like a linen pair of dungarees and they were only 25 euros. And any of the kind of ones that I've gotten back home, I think I have a pair of Lucy and Yak ones as well. They're like 50, 60 euros. So there's definitely some bargains to be had. And a lot of the clothes as well, like I didn't recognize any of the labels. There was a couple of, you know, Spanish brands and stuff. So they were items that I wouldn't be able to get back home. And there was also a couple of random things, a few like mattress stands and like homeware sections. So like kitchen stuff and, you know, kind of your general stuff that you need for the house. So I had so much fun rummaging around. There was loads of basket stands as well. And it does get quite warm. The market does end at 12 o'clock. If you do get there a little late, some of the stands were still there. I think they were, you know, packing up a bit later just to make the most of the last few stragglers walking around the market we got there for 10 a.m and it was super busy um i'm not sure what time it starts at it could start around 8 a.m if you do want to avoid the crowds get there early or just before it finishes so like half 11 it did start to calm down but just bear in mind that it will be warmer it was quite hot when we were walking around Appalachian sunrise meets my skin even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll call it home. Golden, 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 golden things. Mountain Laurel High Five. Miles in spring, rainbow trout and hummingbird wing. Golden, I'll follow the golden, golden, golden things. So with the food in France, I was way more adventurous than I normally would be. And I think it's because I was with a group of people so I could almost sample their food first. But the barattes, I think I must have had throughout the whole week about 10 barattes in me. <laughs> they were just delicious. Good afternoon. I have a tidy French market haul. I want to show you. I didn't get a lot, but I want to show you the fabric that I got. So, first of all, I did get my straw basket. It was not the backpack one that I wanted. They didn't have any. They didn't seem to know what I was on about. I should have saved a picture. But I managed to get this straw basket with the has a little strap. That goes across the front, I think it was 25 quid. And it has the lining on the inside with the drawstring so you can pull it close. Obsessed. It also came in handy because I picked up some fabric. So, my regular viewers will know I was looking for a green stripe material. Because originally I wanted to do some cushions for the sofa when I was doing up the living room. Couldn't find the green stripe in many places. What did I find when I was down the market? Only green stripe, but it's the same colour as the cushions that I've I did 
Um, I have a tutorial on them cushions with piping. It's a couple of video. I think I did it in May, if you scroll back. So um, I managed to get some stripe fabric. Oh my God, girls, the fabric stance. They had so many floral, cottons, linens with lovely patterns on them that I just feel like I, I don't see them as much at home. Obviously in Ireland you've got the 5 euro fabric shop and that had loads of kind of upholstery fabric and like thicker fabrics like this but they didn't have the kind of fun cute floral ones um, and there was loads of them down the market and if I had a heavier case as in if I had more weight in my case available I would have bought more fabric but I picked up a couple of metres of this because I'm thinking this would be beautiful for a DIY window seat which is on the never ending list of things I want to do but did I hear a cat? I thought I heard a cat. There's no cats running around here. Rage. Uh, then I just picked up, so I got basket fabric and I got these dungarees. So I seen a girl wearing a pair of these down in the market and I was like, hashtag influenced. Um, she was wearing a green one. And because I already have a couple of green pairs of dungarees, I thought these ones would be nice for autumn time and um, for when I'm kind of doing stuff like when I'm working from home because they have a longer leg but they're still kind of nice and lightweight and um, because I've loads of pairs of dungarees that are like shorts so I picked up these ones so they're that kind of lightweight material and I don't know can you see yeah so I picked these up so I may have to I may have to I probably will have to do a little job on the legs I must actually try them on because he said they're one size us ladies know one size there's not one size fits all so that is what I got also I have to fly into the supermercado I don't think it's a supermercado in France it's supermercado in Spain I have to get some razors for the hairy legs and then I also picked up the goods throws me off how the colours of the crisps are different to the colours at home. So in Ireland, salt and vinegar, vinegar I think is green packet. And blue is cheese and onion. And then red is ready salted. But this red is called nature. I don't know what nature tastes like. I'm about to find out. Um, so that's what I got up to. Um, I think I'll check back in in the morning because tomorrow is when we're going to the Verbena Fields. Um, we have a dinner this evening because some of the UK team is coming. Um, they came later because I think they're coming by train. Um, so I get to kind of meet them and it's just dinner. I don't think there's that in too much. It's in the same place where we had dinner last night. And then we're up early in the morning to go to the Verbena Fields. So I shall check in with you in the morning. I'm going to have a nice shower now and a little siesta. And then tomorrow will be Verbena Fields. And I'm going to ask all of the questions. I don't know if they grow the variety that's grown at home in Ireland. Do you know the kind of tall with purple um, leaves on the tips? I think it might be a different variety that they grow because it's harvested for, um, for use in... It's harvested for use in beauty products. I don't think it's harvested for cleaning. I know someone was explaining to me the difference between lavendine and lavender. Uh, lavendine is harvested to use in cleaning products. And then the other lavender is used in like beauty products and things like that. So I was like, hmm, very interesting. So I shall have some hopefully nuggets of information for you tomorrow. <laughs>
I hope my mic is working this time, but I'm in the verbena field. And you can probably hear the lovely sound of nature behind me. So um, I think, I'm not sure if my mic was working when Philippe and Magalie were talking, but I did get some footage on my phone, so I'll insert that in. So they were just chatting about, like, so the field behind me, it probably looks big, but it's not actually that big, but this whole field supplies the verbena, I think it's an oil or a water for the L'Occitane products. So for all the verbena L'Occitane products comes from here. And it's amazing how much you can kind of get from one plant, but they were chatting to us about um, like cover crops and how that they want. You can kind of see behind me in between the rows that they want to have, like they're cultivating and growing more cover crops so that the soil can be healthier, so that there's a less reliance on using loads of fertilizers and things like that. So the goal is that the soil will just kind of regenerate itself. I am not a pro when it comes to knowing about things like that. It's something I'm really interested in, but it's not something I have a whole lot of knowledge on. But um, the verbena that's in the field is harvested twice a year. So the kind of saplings that are there, probably only a couple of weeks old, but the lads were saying that they double in size really quickly because obviously the heat behind us. And the verbena, I always thought verbena was a French kind of native flower. Maybe it's just because it's in a lot of the kind of French beauty products. Um, but it's actually native, I think. So the guy said, I didn't double check, but to, I think South America. So I do have some verbena growing at home. I need to go and ask the guys, is it the same verbena that I grow at home? I don't think it is. This verbena smells really citrusy when you rub the leaves. My verbena at home doesn't. So I'm, I'm sure it's a different type of verbena. Um, but if I find out, I'll let you know. So yeah, that is the verbena field. I'm absolutely sweating. <laughs> I'm going to get it was some water and a drink. Um, and I'll pop in any other knowledge that I come across. Um, I'll just do a little voiceover with knowledge. So yeah, I think they also, they also grow lavender and lavandine. So I'm gonna see if we can go there. And then I'm going to seek some shade. I was actually able to find a little article um, about Philip and Magdalene Mary. If you wanna check it out, I will pop it in the description box. Okay, so I feel like I am in heaven. <laughs> um, this is a small little lavender field that's just beside the verbena fields, but there's like a forest in between the two of them. There are so many butterflies, and I don't know if you can hear the hum of the bees, but I am absolutely, I'm trying to like, I know I'm on my camera and I'm like vlogging, but I am gonna put it down and just kind of savor this moment because it's, this is just so, it's just so special, isn't it? Everyone's just taking the pictures and having a walk around. Like, could you imagine coming around for your cup of tea? If you lived in that lovely house up there. There's also more cover crop here, so it must be easier to grow the cover crop. It doesn't feel as exposed to the sun here because there is like a forest and there's some trees here as well. But this is just insane. So I do think Philippa Magdalene Mary's land is not too far from Aix-en-Provence. We were based in Falcalquier. Our hotel was just a little bit outside Falcalquier town, about 10 minutes in the car. And it was about an hour's drive from there. So I do think it's just outside Aix. After having our lunch and a little bit of karaoke in the back of the minibus with Vivi, <laughs> we headed to a wellness session um, that again was in Falcalquier. It was in, I think the caramel factory. And we did like a forest bathing, meditation which was beautiful and then we headed to have our dinner in I'm gonna absolutely ruin the pronunciation called the Mimi basically it's the L'Occitane hotel and it has been getting done up and myself and Karen five years ago actually stayed one night here it's absolutely 
absolutely stunning um and the spa was closed at the time but they are doing it up so we had our dinner here and then we headed back and back to bed I was so tired but we had such a full juicy day and I got to learn so much Good morning, today is the day we are heading towards Valensol and we were going to go to the producer who grows the almonds for L'Occitane. His name is Jean-Pierre Jobert and I also found some information as well if you want to read an, an article on him. I'll pop it in the description box with the link to Philip and Magalie Mary as well. actually removed the almond trees in the years uh, 40s, 50s actually to have more um, the, the type of crops that were more uh, money given and uh, that they could earn the money from that were lavandine, olive trees. So actually the almond trees were re completely removed from the Valençol plateau. And uh, he decided uh, with uh, the meeting of, with Olivier Bossan, the founder of L'Occitane, to actually re-come uh, to the almond tree cultivation. So he replanted in the years 2000, 5,000 almond trees. Donc il me dit de faire un essai. Bon, j'ai fait un essai, je peux des 5000 arbres. Good morning. I am so excited. Okay. Uh, I'm at the almond farm. Would you even call it a farm? Fields? Well, I suppose it is a farm. Um, so I am just at the almond farm and everyone is off kind of taking the pictures and doing the things, but I wanted to come down to the beehives. Now, I risk, I hope I don't get stung, <laughs> light a candle for me. I'm obviously not going to get too close because I don't want to disturb the bees because they're doing their thing. Beautiful lavender field behind, beside me and it's like the bees are just in and out. Um, so we were chatting to Jean-Pierre Jobet and he is the owner of this almond field and he's the one who planted all of these and they were explaining so you'll notice in between each row there is the likes of clover and grass kind of similar i was like i have this in my garden so yeah there's lots of clover i don't know what the other one is with the kind of white flowers on it i'll get a close-up shot so that grows in between the almond trees and also there's more space so like apparently i've never seen like an almond farm where it's kind of uh what's the word where they pack things together oh there was a word and um, so there's a good size gap in between each row of the trees and also the trees have a lot of space in between them so i'm gonna show you the beehives and i'll just zoom in on my lens so if it looks like i'm right next to the bees i'm not disturbing them i'm just zooming in on my lens so that you can kind of see them in action. I don't know what it is about bees. There's something really relaxing about the noise. Um, I'm watching them. Like I'm supposed to be, I have to get some pictures and stuff. I'm like, I just want to chill out with the bees. Um, so we have about two hours here. There's a beautiful, the lavender field here is even better than yesterday. I didn't even think that was possible. So I'll bring you to the lavender field and you can, I'll try and, um, 
move away from the others so that you can just hear the sound of the bees and I'll even put the mic next to the next to the bees so that you can hear them and um, you can probably tell by excitement but let's go let's go Okay, the heat has gotten the better of me. Um, it's about quarter to 12 now, so it's really, really hot. So I think people are kind of finishing up. The UK team that we're with, they seem to be doing, um, I think they're filming some campaigns and stuff. So we're kind of, well, I'm just chilling under a tree <laughs> um, and then we're gonna get lunch. But I'm kind of feeling a bit, you know, when the heat gets you. But then I was like, girl, girl, you are in a lavender field, so come on. And I pick, hang on, I'll flip it around. Oh, the heat. I'm gonna take a little bunch of lavender and I'm going to get back under my shade and I'm gonna have a little sniff because I think this actually gets harvested. A blue golden week, I think. Now, I'm gonna have to ask permission from the bees, but I'm just gonna take two, three little sprigs and this is going to be harvested soon, so... Oh. <laughs> yes, how pretty. So, back under, <laughs> back into the shade. This smells. Oh, there's a little tiny, tiny yellow or white snail on it. I've noticed there's tiny white snails that do be on the lavender, but we did ask, um, one of the uh, one of the Loxitan girls, and she said that those little snails are grant. They're no harm to the plant. But apparently there is something that it's not, I don't think it's common in the UK and Ireland, although if, if the heat increases, it could be. But they were saying that here there is, not like box blight, but there is something that attacks the lavender and it thrives. It's like a mite or something that jumps plant to plant and it thrives in hot weather. And obviously they've got the hot weather here. Now, something very interesting. I was chatting to the girl I was, as I was walking up to the bees and I said like, how cold would it be in spring? I don't know why, I always assume Europe, especially Southern parts of the countries, I suppose like Spain, France, I know like the Northern parts would kind of have cooler climate. Um, but I didn't think that they would get, like it would be cold here. So this is, we are near Valensole. I'm not sure the exact location of where the almonds are. And they were saying that, it's mm, so good. They were saying like spring could be kind of like at home. So like six, seven degrees that they can get frost and that the variety of almonds that are grown here will tolerate a little bit of frost. I never thought that because I know that that can happen with apple trees in Ireland that because they bloom, some of them bloom kind of early around March and if there's a really bad frost then when they're blossoming that can affect your, your crop of apples and you know now my regular viewers will know I'm an apple farmer now of my one apple tree <laughs> and there's also, oh sorry Tosson was calling me, there's also two varieties I think, two different varieties of almond tree so that they can pollinate each other 
I feel like I would love to learn more about that. Like I'd love to learn more about soil. They were saying that exposed dry soil, so dry soil is dead soil, is what they were saying. So that exposed soil, so that's why you'll see, I'll flip my camera, you'll see all of the grasses and the clover and everything. And that's what they were trying to say yesterday as well at the verbena field. So they're trying to grow like cover crop and then also growing stuff in between the rows of the verbena and to basically get to a point where they don't have any exposed soil. Now my head, when I heard about exposed soil, <laughs> don't have exposed soil, I'm like, so that's an excuse to buy more plants. So if I have any gaps in my borders, I buy more plants? Yes, okay. <laughs> so um, I think the girls, look how pretty they are. Look at them. They're in the lavender fields taking their pictures. I did get um, a picture in the lavender field and I got some shots, but you know what lads, the heat, the heat. I'm glad I don't have to do any modeling or anything like that because I wouldn't be able for it. But um, yeah, my, my Irish body is sitting in the shade. But um, I hope I got enough shots of the field and stuff. I think we're going for lunch, but um, Jean-Pierre Jobert, also has a shop here he grows um he actually has his own i think beauty products with the almonds as well so as well as supplying loxitan i think he has his own like homegrown beauty stuff in the shop so i think we're going to get to visit that before um we head to lunch which will be soon because i'm hungry hot and i'm thirsty <laughs> Let's head down to the town of Balansol. We had our lunch here and then just to stretch the legs and after a little bit of lavender ice cream, I had a walk around and I got some shots. Unfortunately, we ran out of time and I didn't get to visit Jean-Pierre's um, shop. But if you are in that area in Balansol and if you just ask any of the locals um, or in any of the restaurants and shops, about Jean-Pierre Jobert. He does have some other, uh, you know, you can, he has a lavender field, you can visit the almond field, and he had a large shop as well. We drove past it, and it's quite well known and popular in the area if you do want to head in. Good. I think I can hear. I can hear Karen. <laughs> uh, we are just unpacking. No, we're not unpacking. We are packing and heading to heading home. But before we head home, we are going to the factory. So I've got all my luggage, and yes, backpack on. We have to check out, and then we're going to the factory. Lab coats, goggles, safety shoes. We are going to make some products today, which I am very excited about. Size. Yeah. Like the yeah. Yeah. You can have a size. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the one where you go inside the laboratories i think that is just kind of for guests only we were not allowed to film inside we were allowed to film in one section of the laboratory which you'll see here and they were making some of the almond moisturizer and we were able to add a few drops in as well it was really interesting to learn about the ingredients but the ingredients that L'Occitane don't use, ingredients that they just use a small amount of, and then the ingredients that they prefer to use. L'Occitane have this thing called the Clean Charter. And um, what I'll do is I'll search on their website to see if I can get you more information on the L'Occitane Clean Charter so you can read more about the ingredients that they don't use as well as the ones that they do use. Mountain laurel high fives for miles in spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird wing. Golden, I'll follow the golden. Golden, golden things. Gold hair. So after our time in the labs, we headed to Axon Provence to get some lunch and we also had a couple of hours of free time before we flew home. Or should I say, I don't want to give a spoiler alert, attempted to fly home. You'll have to watch till the end to see if I actually made it home. But at the time of filming this, I thought I was. After lunch, myself and the girls split up because I wanted to head off on a little solo mission to a cat cafe and a cat. I, I don't know if this was a library or a bookshop, but right next to where we were having our lunch, there was this like a bookshop and it was full of cats. And then I did a Google and there a, a three minute walk from this bookshop. There was a cat cafe and I didn't have an appointment, but the girl was able to let me in because I was just by myself and I got a coffee and I got to just sit and enjoy this. I was actually chatting to Mr. Carrington because if you saw the Chelsea vlog, we went to a cat cafe as well. And I was like, I feel like I'm cheating on you, but I'm after finding a cat cafe and I feel like you should be with me right now.
another thing I did in the acts and it was so much fun and it was a nice way to pass some time while I was waiting for to head back to the airport I got on one of those tourist trains it was 10 euros for an hour and the little train brought me all around the town and it was so much fun and the girls were having a drink and I was just giving them the royal wave while I was on the train and then after the train I headed to meet back up with the girls had a little pastis and then we headed to the airport well have I got a story for you <laughs> if I look exhausted it's because Ryanair uh, did me dirty last night so I'm now on my own let me explain the situation my flight was supposed to be 2320 Marseille to Dublin direct and we were an hour delayed sorry I was in the middle brush of my hair <laughs> It was an hour late, so we went in, half 12, plane was disembarked, people came off, no one was getting on. The lady was like, 23 people need to get off this flight because we are one crew member down and then, or else the plane will not take off at all. And I was like, what? But the lady didn't explain it proper at the time. I don't think her English was uh, too good. So Vivian, who was with us um, on the trip, she works for L'Occitane. Um, she ended up going on the microphone and explaining it to people, like basically doing Ryanair's job. No shade to that girl either. Um, I think it was just, like I really felt sorry for her because obviously people then got angry. People then got the tense. So Karen, Vivian, myself, now Sarah's with us, but like she's five kids and she lives in the west of Ireland. So I was like, you get on that flight to Dublin, right? We'll, we can sort that them out. So the girl was like, oh, we'll give you the sun, moon and the stars. This is the Ryanair girl. You can like stay until Sunday. We'll put you up in a hotel or you can fly 5 a.m. to Bordeaux, then Bordeaux to Dublin. Then you can fly London and then London to Dublin, okay? trying to make it sound like a thing. And I said, you know what? There's lots of like families and stuff on this flight. I, w I can work remotely. I'll stay in Marseille and I'll get the direct flight home on Sunday. So it's now Friday, 9 a.m. And then uh, they took a turn for it. So anyway, they got us. So more people volunteered as well. And I thought maybe because we're volunteering, they'll treat us really well. <laughs> No, they then proceeded to treat us like absolute shit. So this was like, you know, maybe half one. Um, we went to the Ryanair desk and your one, uh, a lot of those options were not no longer available. <laughs> um, so some people flew to Bordeaux, but then now have to wait until 4 p.m. Friday today to fly back to Bordeaux to Dublin. So they're sitting in Bordeaux airport for a couple of hours. Um, I think there was mention of them getting a hotel for the couple of hours so they could sleep. So that was an option. Then there was going to Stansted and then the girls would have been home at like 11 this morning. So like the Marseille to Stansted, Stansted to Dublin. But then, then by the time they got to the desk, that 9 a.m. flight was gone. So the girls now, Karen and Vivian, are sitting in Stansted Airport until 1 p.m. and they haven't slept at all. So I left them in the airport at about half three because they were on that like half five flight to Stansted and now they have a long wait in Stansted. So now you're wondering, so what option did you pick? <laughs> I decided, listen, I'll stay until Sunday. Then Ryanair says, we only cover one night's room. I said, ah, go on, fine. I'll foot the bill for the second day. Then uh, anyone who wanted a hotel had to wait and sit for them to organize the hotel. Then they turn around, this is now 4 a.m. I'm waiting there since one. You guys will all have to organise your own hotel because we can't find you any and just like give us the receipt. Reimburse us. <laughs> I was like, I, oh, if you can't find a hotel, I'm not going to find a hotel. Um, this lovely guy, he's actually on my flight on Sunday because I was like, I didn't get his name to thank him. He walked with me to the Ibis because he was like, listen, I have family in Marseille. 
um, oh no, Avignon, Avignon. Um, he's like, I'm just gonna wait until 7 a.m. and get a train to Avignon to my family. So I was like, all right. So he walked with me to the IBIS at the airport. Zero accommodation available at the airport hotels, like zero. This is now like half four. I went into the IBIS and I just said to the girl, I was kind of, I think, getting a bit, I didn't get emotional, but I could feel myself starting to be like, oh no, I'm stranded now. You know when the reality hits and you haven't slept? I said, listen, I know you don't have a hotel, but by any chance do you have any other hotels? I'll go into the city like, because I want to be in the city anyway, like, so I can ramble. She's like, let me, let me see. She's like, I said, listen, will you ring them? Because I don't want to go all the way into the city. It's going to be 6 a.m. by the time I get here. And I'm just walking around because the hotel's check-in is 3 p.m. So she rang her IBIS partner uh, hotel. So I'm at St. Charles, I think. Train station's right beside me. Lovely location. And uh, I got here at like 10 to 6. Oh, no, then I couldn't get a taxi, right? So she organised me a hotel. She's like, Grant, this is the price. Um, it'll be a hundred and something a night. And they let you go in at 6 a.m. And they didn't charge me like extra to check in early, which was really sound of them. So then I was like, okay, I have a thing. Went to book a taxi, no taxis. I was like, she's like, yeah, there's not many, especially this hour. She's like, go to the terminal. So I went back to the terminal and I had my free now app and uh, literally 20 minutes, no taxis, no taxis, and no taxis at the rank. And I was like, okay, I can get a bus. But being exhausted, I was like, I need to use all my mental energy now to figure out the bus. Where's it gonna leave me in Marseille? And I have a larger case with me. I don't have my usual small case. And then I was like, I'll just go back to the Ryanair man and say, I'm now stranded. So I went back to the Ryanair desk and yeah, I said to your man, what can you actually do for me now? You promised me a hotel. I've no hotel. I'm after having to organize one myself and I have to go right into the city. I now have no taxi to get to my hotel. So I, what am I to do? <laughs> and just as I was uh, politely given out, my free now app, I managed to get a driver. So I got into the city uh, about 10 to six, checked in. It's now 10 o'clock, is it? It's 20 past 10. Ooh. I got about two or three hours sleep and I didn't get any dinner or anything last night and I can't sleep when it's sunny. So I'm gonna just, I think there might be a Starbucks or a coffee shops and a supermarket because I have no toothpaste because I left it in the other hotel. So that is my ordeal. I'm now gonna end this vlog because I'm sure it's super, super old. I also, because I'm now not gonna be at home for a couple of days, I'm gonna have to, I'm not gonna have to, but I'll do a Marseille vlog, but that will be an extra video because I won't be able to have a chance to film the things I had planned for when I was back in Dublin. And I'm sorry that there was no Sunday Garden video just gone because um, I had pre-recorded some stuff in the garden, like prepping it for the few days I was away. But my neighbor's been great watering and there's been loads of rain in Ireland. So that is my ordeal. I now have um, to do an Ryanair claim. So I'll get me 250 euro. They'll pay back one night and I'll expense my taxis. But I just have a feeling they'll turn around and be like, oh, we have a budget of whatever per night. But I don't know, <laughs> Ryanair, you did me dirty. You've done me dirty before, but this is the dirtiest you've done me. But come here, I made a decision to stay until Sunday. Just seemed like the better option with all these connecting flights with long gaps in the middle. So um, I'm here until Sunday and we can have a little adventure and that'll be in the next vlog. <laughs> I'm now gonna get coffee <laughs> and I'll see you and coffee and then I have to do a bit of laptop work and then it'll be fine. Once I have sleep later today, um, I think I'll feel a bit better. But um, thanks Ryanair, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sherlock, right, I see you in the next one. <laughs>